So, I'm working on a new project. I'm making another book. I need to fill up my water cup. And there's something on the camera lens. I'm not going to question it. But, but yeah. So I'm working on this book. Um, I thought I would try to make a video about it. So now we're cutting up paper. I'm cutting these sheets of uh, that doodle paper from freaking Crayola into thirds. And then I'm going to cut an inch off the side so that they are 4x4 four four square after I fold them into signatures. So yeah, let's join me on that adventure. So yeah, hi, welcome to today's video where we are folding excessive amounts of paper. Like, it is so excessive. I, I really don't think that you quite understand how excessive the amount of paper that I had to fold and cut for this video was. It's so terrible. So we've already gotten to the part where I cut off an inch off the side. Uh, like I said in the beginning, the purpose of this is to make sure that my book is actually square because I made another book and didn't actually make it square and it sort of irritates me and I want this one to be square because it's a gift for Earl who made me my class rig which I told you about in another video a really long time ago because that was months ago when he made that for me <laughs> and, he, and he still needs this this thing as payment right so we're, we're making him a book um, we have officially gotten to the part of the video where I slow everything down and pick up my book and it's really fun what I'm doing in this part of the video is really, really simple. Uh, I'm throwing all my crap away, actually, so it's it's not that difficult. But I'm folding my pieces of paper all in half so that I can eventually put them into signatures. This takes a really long time, too, because I want to fold them more or less perfectly in half, you know, and there are a lot of pages. There are actually only 30 of these, which when folded in half amounts to 60, 60 pages in total for this little book, right? that's not that's not terrible but there's there's still a lot there's a lot so after I folded every single piece of paper in half oh my lord it took so long but this is our last paper it's so glorious we folded them all in half I escaped and put up a new clip I separated them in two stacks of five pieces of paper each there are gonna be six of them which will make six signatures right and the signatures are little collections of paper that we're going to sew a little later. So after that, I took it and put it down and unfolded it and shoved all the paper together. Just like what you're seeing on the screen if you're actually paying attention to this video. Right? Cool. It's, it's not that difficult. We just did that a bunch of times over and over and over again. And then we had six signatures. All the same. Just the same. This is actually the second time I'm recording this audio. This is going to be the first time I'm doing audio this way where I'm watching the video that I just edited and talking into a microphone like a like a, like an idiot, you know, just casually talking to myself. Ah, so then we have all of the signatures and I spent way too long grabbing my clamps and my cardboard so that I could press them and get them even. So that it would be way easier to measure everything out and mark it to later cut because you gotta put some holes in here so we can actually sew it properly, but you know, I want them in the same place generally so I can actually tell what's going on, make sure I get them all in the correct location. So, you know, my, my book press method here is not exactly the best. I use a couple of old wood clamps. You can see me struggling with one of them right now because they're rusty and sort of messy, but you know, they work. They, they clamp things, that's all I need them to do is clamp. It's not really that difficult they just have to clamp things I don't I, it's not so now I'm measuring because, because I, I needed to I gotta measure it out I mean you don't really have to measure it out but I wanted to measure it out now we have my coping saw my glorious coping saw so that I can cut into the middle of all the signatures and get it more or less even um, the reason I use a coping saw is because I saw it in a video one time and it seemed way easier than taking 30 pieces of paper and poking four holes in each of them individually. So we use a coping saw instead because it's just, it's way simpler, I promise. It's so much simpler. Why anyone would want to do this with, with, by hand, I don't know why. But now we've gotten to the sewing portion of this video. I use the long stitch binding method and I'm not even going to attempt to explain how to do that because you can't even see what I'm doing anyways because my big hands are in the way basically this entire time. Uh, the important things that I think that you should remember when you're long stitch binding are that you want an even number of holes always and you always want to start going in so that the knot is on the outside of the signature instead of on the inside. Um, I'm long- 
when you long stitch bind usually you're going to stitch to the outside of your binding material but I didn't want to do that because I don't want you to see my binding so instead you're just gonna not look at it and I'm binding the text block separate of my leather which I'm going to bind this book in right that just makes it a lot simpler I have the sniffles so I apologize if I sound really nasally and sick and gross but we were here sewing for a really long time and I just get to tell you about that because that's that's what you do with this sort of content, right? I'm totally doing this correctly. <laughs> so while, while we're waiting for me to finish this, it's not going to be very long. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. It's, it's not very nice and I'm not going to talk about it. But I hope that you're all doing well. You should, you should do pretty well. But we're finished now. I'm showing off my beautiful text block. It's a, it's a very glorious text block. And then that happened. Uh, I have this bucket here. It looks like it's an ice cream bucket, but actually it's my collection of leather. Um, I have separate buckets for all of my leatherness because I need separate buckets for all of my leatherness. I have to separate them so that I can actually see what's going on. I think it's very important. I have white leather, brown leather, and black leather, which is what that bucket was for. But, you know, eventually I chose my leather piece. Um, I needed a piece that was the size of my little text block, a little bit bigger so that I could fold it down later. Um, I'm picking the piece right now, actually. There were a couple of them that I chose. I had to press down the text block so I could actually tell whether or not the piece of leather was big enough. You know, whatever. I just, I needed the correct piece of leather. You know, they had to, f they had to be an appropriate couple. They couldn't, they couldn't, they, I, they needed to be able to marry without having to divorce is what needed that's what needed to happen with that so this one that's right here on the screen is the one that i eventually chose it took me a while to put away the other pieces of leather but you know i chose that one it was just the best one i liked that one the most so we flopped it over so that i could get to chopping these bits off because i don't i don't need this piece of leather to be this huge man it really it just it needs to be about the size of to wrap around the text block you know is all we need so i'm laying my text block line here i'm flopping it over so that i can tell exactly how big i need this piece of leather to be and it's not really an exact science you can go a little bit bigger but you know it doesn't need to be so huge that you can wrap around your whole text block 800 million times that's not what we need so i chopped it off real quick it didn't take me very long i just grabbed an exacto knife those are very dangerous kids. Don't don't touch those. But but I grabbed my exacto knife and I have my my little little, little rectangle of leather here. Mm, it was really good. I liked that leather. It was it was some good leather. And you know I cut a hole in it too. <laughs> I had to to cut a hole in it. Uh, that you we will understand why we're cutting a hole in it later But right now I'm taking some carving tools that I have and adding some scratches into my leather that you can't really see um, Those will make sense eventually in an artistic manner. This is the cover of the book I'm hoping that they'll make sense eventually I mean, I think that they look okay now looking at my book that I can see in the future of this because um, This is voiceover and not real time. Yeah, <laughs> but I like these scratches. I think they're good. So then we had this thing and I had to push it back and I brought in this watercolor paper because that's what that hole is for is to expose a drawing that I'm doing. Right. But this watercolor paper is too big. It's six by six. My book is four by four and I don't even need it to be four by four. I need it to be smaller. So I marked three inches from the edge on every side of this square piece of watercolor paper marked across and then cut it in many pieces so that I would have some extras just in case you know first we got to cut it in half and then i cut that piece in half then we had two halves it was so cool we just got a whole two halves there's so much nonsense happening here but then i had my nice piece of square paper and got started drawing my eye which is what that hole is for this is a dragon themed book here i decided that i did not want to sculpt a whole dragon to put on the front cover of this book so i i painted an eyeball instead i actually lost some footage towards the end of this where i was doing some shading on the actual the sclera of the eye but that was not important it was just blue so I, I i stuck with the very simple color scheme i was i thought that the warm colors would go nicely with the black of my leather and it did you know i liked the way that it came out 
we have these very tasty warm colors there are a lot of reds and oranges and things going into this painting i messed it up a lot and then i fixed it and <laughs> then that worked out and then to put the black in the pupil of the eye here i use the same color that i shaded with which is a very dark blue actually and that's what the, that's what it came out looking like i think it looks pretty nice it came out pretty pretty tasty so then we had to line it up with my leather so that i could glue it but before I did that, I taped over the top of it so that it wouldn't move and I could glue it in place and not have to rip it off of my leather and unglue it and have a whole conundrum. That would just be bad if I had to rip the paper. So I just put some paper tape on top of it. This just made my life a lot simpler so that I could flop it over and glue it separately. And after we got our paper tape, I had to grab my gluing apparatus. I have... A paintbrush that I use is my specific wood glue paintbrush and this wood glue you know those are the things that I use and I also have in my collection of things that I use to glue other things this toilet um, that sounds worse than it is but <laughs> a, a, a few years ago now um, my pop who is my by bi not biological my grandfather on my mom's side right he gave me this tape dispenser, and it was a little orange dude sitting on a white toilet, and the orange dude held the tape, and he was sitting on this toilet. And I have since lost the tape and the dude, but I have the toilet, and, and I like to use the toilet to house my wood glue, because what else am I going to use it for? And I need somewhere to put my wood glue so I can dip my paintbrush in it sometimes, you know? So... So that shows up later in this video, but first we're going to be gluing things. I'm putting little dollops of glue underneath each corner here so that I can make sure not to get glue all over the actual eye because I don't want that. That would not be very nice. I mean, I've done that before. It, it tends to just look a little bit yellow, if not clear, but you know, I just, I don't want to risk that. I would prefer not to damage my eyeball and it's watercolors anyway, and so I don't want things that are wet to get all over it. That, that would just, that would probably just reactivate the water, that, that doesn't sound like what we want. So we're just putting little dollops of glue underneath each corner to sort of keep it flush here on the leather. And then after that, I put just, wow, there was just, there's just an excessive amount of glue needed to make books. So I flopped around my, my piece here, made sure that all of the glue was underneath everything. You know, I gotta make sure that there's enough to keep it nice and together and make sure that it never separates you know divorce is not an option with this piece of paper here i don't want it to get out and then we just put glue everywhere i started adding it into places that maybe it didn't need to go i this looks like more of a mess than it was <laughs> but i probably should not have left in this much footage for this gluing process because it's really not that hard you just put glue everywhere really um I know you can't see what I'm doing right here. My hand is in the way, but I'm right-handed and the camera was on my right side. Okay, I can't help it. Just so I put glue everywhere is what what happened and then grabbed my paintbrush and painted it everywhere to make sure that there was a nice even coat so that things wouldn't get a, get away. You don't want your paper to get away, okay? It cannot escape. It is your prisoner. You don't want it to get away. Um putting this much glue on the back of it did end up reactivating the watercolors a little bit but that was fine um after that i grabbed some wax paper and shoved it right on top to make sure that it would not attach to the back of this thing while i pressed it then this happened <laughs> i'm very entertained so and it's flickering right <laughs> <laughs> After that, we waited for the glue to dry, and then we came back to unclamp it. Something was going on with my clamp, so I played with it, but then I fixed it. Um, so I pulled this off here, pulled off the wax paper. You know, that was very satisfying. I left in a whole clip for you. Look at how satisfying that is. But then the glue was still wet, so I left the wax paper on there and pulled off the paper tape instead. If you look really closely, you can see some residue left on there. I mean, that's that's kind of gross looking. But the eyeball still looks fine. I'm showing it off here. It's a little wet, but we're just going to let that dry. It's really simple. So we now get to do the fun part where we measure and cut a very beautiful piece of cardboard 
and a 4x4 four four square to use as cover material so that the cover is a little bit more rigid. But we got distracted because I remembered that my text block needed some glue on the spine so I pressed it and pooped in my toilet with some glue and put there on the spine. Then I added a little piece of cotton linen. This is for two reasons. It's to strengthen the spine and make sure that the text block stays together because we don't want our signatures to just come apart in the middle of the book. So I'm pressing this cotton linen here into all of my glue, making sure I get into all the crevices. Um, I want to make sure it has a nice flush edge there. I grabbed my bone folder here just to make sure that I got over my seam lines so that it was really in there and the spine would be super solid and secure. And then I added another layer of glue on top of that just, just to make sure that the linen didn't go anywhere and we had a lot of extra support. It's very simple. So then we came back to our book with our cover and I'm cutting out this little piece of cardboard. It's about half an inch wide and that's just to serve as that space in the middle so I know where to actually put all of this excessive amount of glue here that I'm doing with my hand in the way so that I can glue my covers into the correct locations because we don't want them to be in the wrong place. That would that would not be bad. That would be bad. Not, not be bad. You know what I'm trying to say. So we put that glue there popped on that cover piece real quick. You know, we want to be careful because we want to be in the correct location. I have it just a little bit off from that piece there, which, you know, that's important. But we came back and we're gluing now and I'm doing it with my left hand so you can actually see the beauty that is the dropping of the glue. It's very, very satisfying. I think, I think it's the most satisfying thing that I have ever put into a video. It's, it's just, it's very glorious. It looks very good. But then um, we stopped that because we didn't want to see it anymore. I think that my recording is just a little bit behind here. What I'm seeing versus what I'm saying. But now we're, we're painting it on there. We want to make sure that it has a nice even tone. My thing has just gotten a little bit glitchy here. So it's completely stopped. But I think it's still recording audio. So I'm still talking. But basically what I did was I painted it on there, then I put my cardboard down, and that was really simple. Then I put down a piece of wax paper and folded it to press it. Because it needs to be pressed so that the glue will adhere properly. And then we left. And while we were gone, I cut up these two beautiful pieces of maroon paper. Which I'm going to use as end pages, but we don't actually use those until later. Because instead, we're going to bring back our text block, which is now dry. I just want to unceremoniously pop that out. And then pop out my cover here, because it needs to be removed. And it looked like this when I unfolded it. Very, very pretty. You know. So my next order of business is to do some cutting on my leather. You see me cutting these in the middle, that's so I can fold in that tab of leather so that we don't have a raw edge right there on the spine. I want it to look pretty because this is, this is a book. You know, we like reading books, we like using books, but we also like looking and smelling books because books, books are glorious. Then I cut off these tabs on the corners here so that we wouldn't have any weird overlap whenever I fold it over the corners to glue them in and keep the raw edges off of the sides of the book as well to cover up that cardboard because you don't want to see cardboard on your book. We do this on all four corners just to make sure that when we fold it over, you know, it's not all lumpy because we don't want a lumpy book. We want a nice pretty flat book, right? So we cut off those corners. Very simple. Now I left in this clip. I don't think that I meant to leave in this clip. I think that I meant to cut this clip out, but here we are anyways, watching this clip. Whoops. Anyways, I got my, <laughs> my X-Acto knife and cut this little hole here in the middle of the book. There are two parallel lines that I'm cutting here. Um, I have a couple of clips of this where I'm stabbing it, you know, to make sure that the hole is actually a hole. This is so I can put in a drawstring that I'm going to use, and it's not really going to draw anything. It's just going to hold the book closed. You know, it's sort of like a weird little sketchbook. So I did a lot of struggling with this, um, which you can see, but actually my camera died and cut off and I didn't actually know it. So we don't actually get to see the part where I'm folding over the edges of the book. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That is a big sigh on that one. <laughs> but we came back and it looked like this and some of the glue was still wet, but not much of it. 
Um, so I'm painting on a thin layer of glue here on this side of the page. And the reason it needs to be thin is because our next order of business is to attach the end pages. Now my end pages are usually going to be a thicker sort of cardstock, but even cardstock has its limits with various and sundry um, wet things. You know, you don't want a lot of liquid on your paper that's gonna break your paper. So you want a thin layer of glue because you don't want wrinkly end pages. You want it to look pretty. So we take our beautiful end pages and press them down here. Nice and pretty, you know. We want to be sort of careful, slide them into the correct location because we want them to line up with the edge of the book pretty well, which I did kind of terribly. Um, as we'll see later in the video, but then I did this again on the other side, thin layer of glue, another end page, pressing it down pretty firmly, trying to get it into the correct location. Looks really nice, and we got it covered. Then I put in some wax paper on both sides of the end pages just to make sure that they didn't get messed up while I was doing this next part. You notice that I have this hole here? That is to shove my text block into, and I put so much glue in there so much glue wow so i want this much glue because i want to give my text block the absolute largest chance of attaching to this because I, I need it to be attached really um when i shove it in here it needs to really be shoved in here and i put a lot of effort into shoving it in there because really it was it was a perfect space for that text block that i created put it in there and then i added a little bit of glue with my paintbrush here from the end pages to the inside of the text block, you know, because that's how you attach your end pages, or at least how I attach the end pages, is I just shove a little line of glue, and then I folded the book, pressed it, and left it that way. And it was, it was all nice. And when we came back the next day, it was still pressed, so I had to get it out. Wow, look at that. There was a little bit of damage from my clamps. This would have not been a problem if I had not been silly and used wood instead of cardboard so that the clamps would not stab it, but it happened anyways. Um, it doesn't look so bad now, but then it was a little bit worrisome, so I spent a little bit of time working it out and cutting up this end page, which I got a little bit out of place. I had to do it to both end pages, but I only kept in this clip here. But that's okay, sometimes we all make mistakes, so I just fixed them, went through all the pages, and made sure that the signatures were doing pretty all right, flipped through the book for you, and then I tied its pretty little knot, which took so long, because it's leather and not just a knot, so I had to figure out what I was doing. I didn't want to tie it twice, but then I realized, oh, this is thick leather, you know, it's fine if I tie it twice. Jeez, Carolyn, you don't have to be so silly. Whatever. So now we get to show it off for you. This is a very small 4x4 journal. You know, it's got an eyeball on it, it's got 60 pages, it's got this string, it's made of leather, and it's really cool. And I'm glad that you all watched the video, I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Goodbye!